Shabbat Shalom. How do you bring a nation back together after years, decades of conflict, strife, or even armed aggression? This has been a challenge throughout human history, and the solution was often sought from kings, dictators, and in the 20th century, communist governments. Forcing people to live together under strong leadership, accompanied by some degree of prosperity, if they could achieve it, was the way it typically went. And it would often work for a while, until the next time unresolved conflict broke free from its chains and the cycle would begin again. Late in the last century, something remarkable and new happened that has forever changed the paradigm for resolving deep, violent social conflicts. After the end of the apartheid regime in South Africa, a period of systematic oppression of black and mixed race South Africans under a minority white government, once the regime was overthrown, the people of South Africa, under its new majority government led by the African National Congress, had to figure out how to live together as a unified nation of black, mixed race, and white South Africans. The solution, novel and innovative, was to speak the truth to one another. In 1995, South Africa established the Truth and Reconciliation Commission under the leadership of Archbishop Desmond Tutu. This commission was empowered to grant amnesty to those who committed abuses during the apartheid era as long as the crimes were politically motivated, proportionate, and as long as there was full disclosure by the person seeking amnesty. Rather than simply holding criminal trials and sentencing those convicted of crimes against South Africans, perpetrators were given the opportunity to answer for their actions and to hear the impact their actions had on innocent victims. Regarding this process, Archbishop Tutu has said, to forgive is not just to be altruistic. It is the best form of self-interest. It is also a process that does not exclude hatred and anger. These emotions are all part of being human. If you can find it in yourself to forgive, then you are no longer chained to the perpetrator. You can move on and you can even help the perpetrator to become a better person too. While imperfect, this process contributed significantly to South Africa moving past the apartheid era and to look to its future. Similar processes have been used to resolve conflicts in post-communist Eastern Germany, Chile, the Congo, Sierra Leone, and Nepal. This week's Torah portion, Vaigash, demonstrates the power of reconciliation as a response to deep conflicts. Joseph, the operational ruler of Egypt under Pharaoh, sold into slavery by his jealous brothers, is reunited with the siblings who had faked his death to their father Jacob. Through the mysteries of biblical storytelling, the brothers did not recognize Joseph, but he knew who they were. At its climax, the story continues. Then Joseph could no longer control himself before all his attendants, and he cried out, Have everyone leave my presence. So there was no one with Joseph when he made himself known to his brothers. And he wept so loudly that the Egyptians heard him, and Pharaoh's household heard all about it. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still living? But his brothers were not able to answer him because they were terrified at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, Come close to me. When they had done so, he said, I am Joseph. 
your brother, the one you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed and do not be angry with yourselves for selling me here because it was to save lives that God sent me ahead of you. For two years now there has been a famine in the land and for the next five years there will be no plowing and reaping. But God sent me ahead of you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. So then, it was not you who sent me here, but God. Joseph, a man of great power, could have exacted any revenge he wished upon his brothers. Instead, he forgives them and takes away all responsibility for his Egyptian enslavement and imprisonment from his brothers and places it with God. This is a moment of truly technicolor drama. But before the reconciliation comes the weeping. Joseph must express the sadness and pain that had been inflicted upon him by his brothers, the sadness and pain that had been pent up for decades. He needs to be seen, recognized, and heard. Only then does he forgive and absolve them, his brothers, responsibility of his fate. For Joseph and the Israelites, the progeny of Jacob, their collective future is dependent on this moment. And the result for Jacob's clan and their descendants for generation, the result of this is prosperity for them in the land of Egypt. Speaking from the perspective of South African history, Nelson Mandela said, Reconciliation does not mean forgetting or trying to bury the pain of conflict. Reconciliation means working together to correct the legacy of past injustice. Reconcile from the Latin means to reestablish togetherness. Joseph, at last, is together again with his brothers and his father, Jacob. Joseph shows us the way to work through painful conflict and to authentic forgiveness. The pain cannot be buried and forgotten. Before the reconciliation comes the weeping. May we be inspired by Joseph's example to be seen, to be understood and then to forgive. Ken Yehi Ratzon, may this be God's will. Shabbat Shalom.